In this video, we're gonna take a look at a black ink by Noodlers, their Black Eel. Now, as always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. It really does help me out. Now, also down in the description is a link to the Black Ink playlist, so if you wanted to see more of them, you could find that there. I'm an ink guy, and let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. No feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, no tone variation. The extra fine took seven seconds to dry while the medium took 13. The scrubby showed no color variation. We're not getting it in the writing and the smear test, you could likely recover it if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Waterman's graduate with a fine nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, no real ghosting, no feather, spread, halo, sheen, the extra fine does seem just a hair lighter than the, than the stub or medium. There, yeah, no shading. Uh, the extra fine took 11 seconds to dry while the medium took 17. The scrubby for both gave us no color variation. We got none. And the smear test, I do not think you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and then it's put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And you see that a majority of this ink really bonded very quickly onto that filter paper. Not much of it moved up. The one on the right really looks the same. It, I kind of expected the rest of that ink to bond, but it didn't. So there is a little bit that we could expect to maybe move, but this might be as resistant as their bulletproof. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. No bleeding, no ghosting. We get no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shading in any of the writing, no tone variation in any of the writing. The extra fine took five seconds to dry and the medium took 13. The scrubby for both show no color variation and we're not getting any in the smear test. You could not recover if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink could be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it handles itself perfectly. A great ink for note taking if you need to go back and highlight. Water had no effect. Pen flush, no effect. One third bleach solution, only the slightest of effects. Now, it only took water to get it out of my pen. The next writing sample is done on North Books paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. We get no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shade, no tone variation at all. The extra fine took two seconds to dry while the medium took three. Scrubby for both give us no color variation. We get none in a writing, it's working beautifully. Smear test says you could likely recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Noodler's Black Eel has a viscosity of 2.12, making it normal. If you're interested in how the viscosity test and all of that's done, then down in the description is a link to that video. The next writing sample is done on Field Notes Steno Pad. No bleeding, no ghosting. We get no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shading in any of the writing, no tone variation. The extra fine took three seconds to dry and the medium took four. Scrubby for both gave us no color variation. We didn't get it. In the smear test, you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds and the realm of normal was 13 to 21 seconds. Noodler's Black Eel has an average dry time of 11 seconds, meaning it dries just a little bit faster than normal. The last writing sample is done on Fabriano Echo Qua. No bleeding, no ghosting. We get no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shade, beautifully performing black ink with no tone variation. 
The extra fine took five seconds to dry and a medium took seven. Scrubby said no color variation and the writing sample agreed. The smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. Instead of finding inks that look like Noodler's Black Eel, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went with a nice green ink from Levenger, their Gemstone Green. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description are links to those playlists. So what do I think of Noodler's Black Eel? Generally, a good dark black with no shading and it's very resistant, which can be nice. It's got that added benefit of being a lubricated ink as well. So if you have piston fillers, I could see this being really your go-to black because of how permanent and well-performing it is. So what nib and pen are gonna give the best writing experience with this ink? This is where it's interesting because there actually are other pens that I tend to write with some of these inks with. And I did find that a very dry fine like the Platinum 3776 Soft Fine does show some of the flaws of this ink. It showed it being much lighter and having some shading. So it is possible that that could happen given that pen, but any medium flow any nib, and this ink is going to perform flawlessly. Just watch out for those very dry, very fine pens. I hope you got something out of this video, and in the next video, we're gonna look at Sailor Kobe number seven.